Hi, I'm Dave Baring, Technical Director here at TriStar, and welcome to another Tech Talk. Uh, this is actually a little bit different from our normal Tech Talk for a couple reasons. First, it's on a, uh, a subject matter that isn't typically what uh, TriStar is involved with, and that's metal bearings. Uh, but secondly, we're going to break this up into four little short videos uh, talking about some very specific things in each video. Uh, the topic of, the, of this series is why metal bearings fail. And uh, while that may seem a little odd for us since we are not in the metal bearing business, I think it's important for you as a potential user of polymer uh, self-lubricating bearings to understand what the causes of failures are in rolling elements so that you have a better idea of how uh, our products can offer you good solutions. So we're going to talk about um, the, the four major reasons for uh, failures of rolling, uh, rolling element bearings um, and we're going to get into some very specific uh, information as, as we go on through the four uh, video series. So let's, let's start by taking a quick look at um, the major reasons for bearing failures. First of all is if you've ever taken apart a piece of equipment and you've seen something that looks like this, um, then you know what a bearing failure looks like. Um, so let, let's take a look at what the main causes are. Lubrication failure. Um, according to Timken Bearing, who is obviously one of the largest, if not the largest, bearing manufacturer in the world, they estimate that over 50% of all bearing failures are due to lubrication issues. And uh, there's, there's a number of reasons, but the top four are incorrect lubrication is used for the application, and that can be anything from the wrong viscosity um, to a material or a lubrication that's not appropriate for the temperature range that the bearing is asked to operate in. Uh, second is inadequate maintenance. Um, this is something that anybody who's uh, dealt with MRO applications understands that uh, um, maintenance, the maintenance crews sometimes can't get to some of these bearing locations to do regular maintenance. Um, I had a situation personally once where uh, there was over a million bearings in one plant. This was an automotive production plant and uh, there was over a million bearings that were having to be lubed um, and the, the instructions on this lubrication process were ridiculous because they had to break the seal off, they had to clean even to the point of ultrasonically cleaning the bearings and then using exactly 40 grams of very expensive tribal grease that sold for about $300 a kilo back then and then pack it and reseal it. Uh, can you imagine the cost of doing that um, and quite honestly that automotive plant just didn't do it and that's why they were having so many bearing problems. So inadequate maintenance usually in the form of, of too long of a period between either renewing the the grease or just simply a lack of lubrication altogether. Third thing is over lubrication. Uh, there was a study done um, with a um, large group of maintenance managers for uh, uh, manufacturing facilities and they were asked what they thought their number one problem was in terms of maintenance of bearings and over 70 percent said that they felt that over lubrication was a big problem for them and so when we talk about lubrication we'll really look into this uh, over lubrication it's something we don't normally talk about uh, and then finally, contamination. Um, and contamination usually comes from either seal failures on, on the, the, uh, the sealed bearings or pot uh, potentially other external sources. Um, and contamination and corrosion, we're going to talk about those together in a following video. So let's look at corrosion. Uh, corrosion can be in, again, many different forms. Um, the number one reason for corrosion, obviously, is sources that produce rust, and uh, it's, it's visualized quite often in the bearings by red and brown areas that show up on the balls and races and cages. 
And it can be from everything from uh, corrosive fluids or gases um, in, in food processing plants, for instance, the clean down solutions that our oxidizers uh, easily corrode just metal bearings, even stainless steel bearings can be corroded. Um, the failure mode with corrosion is usually uh, simply from increased vibration and that vibration comes from a buildup of debris and that then in turn leads to a loss of clearance uh, or what's better known as preload and so now you start to get um, the, the bearings and the races and the cages just uh, vibrating and moving all over the place until failure um, sealed bearings obviously will help with corrosion, but uh, there's a lot of environments where even the seals don't hold up. So corrosion is, uh, after lubrication, is the next largest reason for failures. Third on the list is contamination. Uh, contamination can come from a number of different sources as well. Um, improperly maintained bearings get contaminated either from failed seals or they may be uh, applications where there are no seals. Um, if maintenance is not monitoring properly the, the level of lubrication or if the lube is getting debris in it that, uh, that grease can become a lapping compound and it damages the balls and races and at the end of story. Um, also the use of the incorrect lubrication for the environment can lead to premature failure. Um, and that that is simply um, misusing the greases that are available out there. I know that uh, there are some situations now where the new uh, EP greases um, have some pretty volatile additives in it and those can cause a lot of grief especially with sealed bearings. So um, contamination, uh, dirt, grit, things that get into the races, into the balls and ultimately cause uh, a complete breakdown of that bearing. Next thing is overloading. Um, not something that you would normally consider it, unless you're an OEM. The first thing that you're going to look at as an OEM is what um, the load properties are of the bearing. Does it match up with the load characteristics of the application? Um, and that can include everything from motors to gearboxes to uh, conveyor shafts and all kinds of different applications where um, are you under designing or possibly even over designing the application um, as far as how it handles load. But what happens with excessive loading um, as you can see from this picture is there is what's called a spalling failure. Uh, spalling sometimes is also connected with uh, metal to metal adhesion if you've ever seen um, this type of failure, if you were to look at it under a microscope, you could actually see small shards of metal that in the right circumstances can actually start to weld themselves together uh, during service. And that's especially true um, you know, in applications where there's either a lubrication issue or just, as we say here, an excessive load. Um, premature fatigue. You know, if the application is exceeding the, uh, the compressive strength and the uh, modulus elasticity of the material, that can cause uh, metal fatiguing. Um, and then tight fits. Um, sometimes just simple press fits onto the shaft and into the housing will cause a problem because now you're squeezing um, all those different components in together and that tight fit can actually cause excessive loading within the bearing itself. Um, other things can affect the loading would be things like misalignment. Uh, you can actually introduce an edge loading in the race and that's uh, kind of indicated in that picture was uh, a very prominent edge load and wear scar that was taking place on that race. Uh, bench shafts, offset loading, burrs, all these things can lead to uh, excessive loads. Um, and then at the end of the day really is, is the right bearing being used for the application. Um, giving a good example, uh, a lot of people use rolling element bearings for oscillating applications. Uh, that's probably one of the worst scenarios you can apply a rolling element bearing because it really doesn't take advantage of the ability of the bearing to, to produce that continuous lubricating film. 
And so you'll see with oscillating applications more prevalent wear due to things like Brunelling and these, excess, these load scars because all of the load is being applied in a very small area. So, um, you know, bearing selection, just as anything, uh, as anything else in life, you've got to pick the right thing for the job. And uh, that's certainly true with, with ball bearings. And then finally, uh, we'll talk about true and false Brunelling. Uh, now, Brunelling, for lack of a better description, is simply uh, a bunch of indentations that occur in uh, various forms on the races and balls. And if you've ever heard a clicking noise in a bearing, more than likely that clicking is coming from one of these Brunelling marks, these indentations. Um, and these things occur basically when um, either there's an excessive load or misalignment uh, or contamination. All these things can lead to this Brunelling. Uh, Brunelling is broken down into two categories. True Brunelling is really a situation where the load has exceeded the elastic limit of the bearing material. So whether it's steel or stainless steel, uh, doesn't really matter. Whatever is happening in that application has pr produced a load that's far in uh, excess of what the material is avail available to handle. False Brunelling is uh, usually seen as little depressions, little um, oval depressions that are fairly regular around the diameter of the race. And these usually come from vibration or swaying motion between the balls and the races. Um, this is one of those situations that I just talked about with oscillating applications where uh, there's not a full rotation and so you're more apt to see this type of, uh, of failure in situations where you've got like lift and tilt oscillating applications. Um, so the last batch of material or the last batch of uh, failures here are, are things that just fall under the same large scope view of, uh, of bearing failures, fretting, uh, overheating, Obviously, if you've got lubrication problems, you're going to get overheating from friction, uh, reverse loading. Uh, this is almost like a situation that you might see in an oscillating function, but reverse loading can change uh, how the material is handling the loads. Misalignment, as we talked about before. Um, spalling that occurs from fatigue failure. And then improper fits. Sometimes uh, a too tight of a press fit or too loose of a fit uh, both can cause issues. So that's basically the end of the introduction video and the next three videos we're going to be talking about uh, the top four reasons for failures and that's uh, lubrication, uh, brunelling, overloading, and corrosion and contamination. So um, we'll get into more um, detailed conversations in the following videos. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for video number two, lubrication failures.